happening it's hard then, to stream server and then something that turned my blood cold was that i had seen something about an article posted I mean, about trump like possibly runway. running in 2024 it was like yeah. yeah that's what we fucking uh, need. good it works on twitch let's check youtube running in 2024 yeah working on youtube what's up let's look at twitter Working on Twitter. I like the fact that you stream this to like 90,000 different places and you have to check them all. Thanks, Twitch. Uh, is the stream working on Trovo? What the fuck is I Trovo? Was actually, about to say that. <laughs> my favorite my favorite thing is um, uh, I like streaming on Trovo and then getting the um, the email afterwards where it's like, Here's your stream report from Trovo. Zero viewers, zero new viewers, zero new subscribers, zero watch time. It's like, thanks. Well worth, Thank Trovo. Well, worth well worth my bandwidth. Thank you. <laughs> what is never fucking Trovo, heard of Trovo before. It's uh it's sort of an it's poised to be an up and comer. Um it seemed like it was uh really catching on in the Spanish speaking world for a while. Um, it just seems like a solid platform. It just needs that one like push to to make it happen. Oh, it needs its own ninja. Is that what's going on? Well, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> hopefully not. I don't even see us on here. What do you have us on? Yeah, I'm trying to <laughs> TVGP because I found to... an E1 M2. I'm trying. To... <laughs> All right, wait a minute. That's our thing. Let me let me look. We'll just restream. TTVGP12. Uh, it's supposed to be E1M1 network, but it says unable to connect. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Great. 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 Turn it back off. Turn it off. Turn it back on. <laughs> nope. Thanks, Trovo. Two thumbs up. That well, won't matter anyways. No one's watching oh. over there. Oh. Oh. Thanks for uh, reminding me of something else I need to talk to talk about. So our company uses GoDaddy. Um, uh, as web servers <laughs> for our uh, website. Mm -hmm. I'm not. I'm, uh, it's not my oh. choice. I don't. I know they no. suck so bad. TVGP is still on there because no one accepts .tv transfers for hosts that I want to be on. Thanks. Uh -huh. Great. Um, so GoDaddy have their own web space email bullshit. There. Yes. Oh God. Yeah. It's hot garbage. It's a Good nightmare. News. Good news, Boston. That thing that they updated in 1996 and then never bothered updating again. Uh -huh. They're officially phasing it out. Whoa. Wow. As of Friday just passed. Okay. And they are instead shifting over to Microsoft Workspaces. A little better. Okay. Yeah. Which means that my email is now an Outlook email account. Ooh, nice. Uh huh. Like Outlook or Exchange? Outlook, genuine oh, yeah. Outlook. It's like uh, their hosted Outlook version. Yeah. yeah. So the good news is, I know straight away what to do. You're right. The bad news is, I work with three other people who use an email account through our work-based web server <laughs> kind of thing. Can I still use my AOL account? It's like, no! Sit down! These are the same people, Boston, who sent me that mail merge document I sent to you? <laughs> <laughs> God. Yeah. Do you want? Do you want to tell that? Yeah. That one? Moon sends me a screenshot. Uh, he didn't need to redact it. It said, "Hey, can you help me load these e these addresses into uh, an email to do the standard mail merge?" Yeah. It's just a list of numbers. That's it. Just one column. One, one column, column of numbers. Of just numbers. N no <laughs> idea what the uh -huh. numbers are. Definitely no addresses. No names. Mm -hmm. So, uh -huh. no, I can't help you. Look, we have all been there. When you export a spreadsheet and you're like, all right, I'm ready for the mail merge. Nope, I forgot all the fields. All right, let's do it again. But there was no, all right, let's do it again step. <laughs> yes. And ah. it, 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 that kind of thing is the thing I'm dealing with. And yeah. it's like, come on. Yeah. Like, now I have to show, teach everybody how to use this new email server. With all and the buttons. 
<laughs> yeah, and one of the guys who I work with has everything set up. I set up his his work phone and his tablet and everything, so he can just get it direct to his phone. Oh, if okay. He's on iOS, so I just did uh, the what you call it, whatever it's called, where yeah. you set up the email on the phone, like and the built-in the mail web. thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then everybody started talking about this new email server and started telling him what he needed to do. And then I got called into his office and was like, I need your help fixing this email stuff. And I was like, no, you don't. It's already you working, don't man. use a web-based client. Just ignore so therefore, them. therefore, <laughs> you're fine. Yeah. Just don't, wor don't worry about it, sweetheart. You're uh -huh. good. This is the same person who literally responds to an email and then deletes it and then wonders why he can't find anything six months <laughs> later when questions come up. So good. I uh -huh. love it. That sounds awesome. Yeah. Whenever whenever people uh, say that, like, we, you know, in 10 years we won't need IT people, I've been hearing that for, like, 30 years. I just think uh -huh. we're, we're good for, Don't, still good for like, a while. It's a lifetime. Yeah. I still get people calling me saying, hey, I accidentally clicked the update Outlook. How do I get it to look like the old Outlook? You click the button on the top right that says revert to old outlook. Right. Like it's literally a fucking or, button right how there. How about a time machine, man? Like I don't Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> like the funny thing is like it legitimately took me like two minutes. Like I, I updated my email. I got mm. it over to Outlook and was like, okay, now I'm gonna fix all of these visual settings, like the yep. marked as red and stuff like that. Dark mode, and single like, click red. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. I'm going to fix all of those settings. It took me like less than two minutes to fix mine. And as soon as somebody else shifted over to it, I just got a phone call. It was like, how, how do you add a signature? And I was like, it's in the settings. There's where's a the signature settings? button. Yeah. I was like, where's the settings? It's like, it's the same as it is on literally every single device you've yeah. ever had. Every office program has the same menu. Yeah. And it's like, it's the cog. It's always the cog. It's the cog right. on your phone. It's the cog on your computer. It's the cog on the website. It's the cog on everything. The cog is the settings. Well, hang on. <sighs> Does Outlook really have a cog on the phone? I don't know about on the phone. It definitely Somewhere does probably. on the website. Yeah. There's always a cog. Yeah, it is a cog. Jack, rip that door. <laughs> 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 All right. Are you guys ready to That's start it. this thing? Yeah. I I think we've no. gone off the rails long enough. <laughs> Not in the slightest. All right, starting in three, two, one. Welcome back to another episode of That Video Game Podcast. I'm your host, Boston, and joining me as always is Moonpeer. Howdy. I hate you. I'm at wrong show. Sorry. Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. That's okay. And the Nimp. Hello. <laughs> uh, Patreon.com slash E1M1. The ones and numbers. Skype delay. Uh, it's where you can get all the cool behind the scenes early access, two week early access to We Rogue Like It, show where Moonpeer and I talk about roguelikes, spend about a month on average with a, a game, then we turn it over to the Council of Science. They figure out where it lands in the infallible, set in stone list of the best roguelikes of all time. I will not hear uh -huh. any dissent. Science has uh, discovered with that list. Yes. Uh, oh, the spreadsheet even has an exclamation point on it. That's how serious you know it is. It's in caps with an exclamation mark. That's how serious we oh. are about, I mean, the scientists are about science. Um, it, uh, I'm dropping frames like crazy. Great. Um, oh, yes. <laughs> super. Uh, two month early access to uh, Critical Misses, show where Moon and I are doing, uh, we're talking about all the media we missed. And uh, going through, going through all that stuff. Uh, that's been a great show. Season ten underway right now. Season eight, I believe, is uh, airing for patrons. Uh, so if you want early access to that, go check it out. And the uh, uncensored behind the scenes uh, exclusive outcast, uh, where we talk about everything else. This week was a real, uh, all of a sudden, kind of a kind of a week. So we're talking about a lot of. Uh, a lot of spicy stuff. A lot of, a lot of complaints. A lot of getting kids off of our lawn uh, for this week. So, uh, and uh, apologies for anyone that's watching this live. My internet is uh, fighting me the entire day today. So, uh, I was gonna make a joke about how you literally restarted your internet before we um, started recording. 
yeah, I probably should have restarted my computer too, but you know, I restarted. Yeah. Just I restarted on the whole house and <laughs> yeah, like I, I restart it every time before I I do these shows just to make sure. But yeah, I don't know. Maybe I should have burnt like a sage stick or something in the room. Uh, who knows? Where, uh, and, where are yes. your breakers? Because that's the real solution. Yeah, because... they're outside. I could just flip, 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 flip. Yeah. yeah, that's the good stuff. Anyways, Moon, what have you been playing this past <laughs> week? <laughs> Uh, okay, so I'm not going to start with Destiny 2. Okay. If you want to talk about it, Boston, I will let you take that and I will add in. Uh, I didn't have it on my list. Okay, so Destiny 2, I have continued to play it. It is a video game. Um, we, we, got to the, we got to the quest marker that says, wait for the ritual to commence. It's like, ah, that'll happen probably in a month or two. Uh-huh. Um, so... I'm messing with Dim is the main thing to take away from that. So, do you have time? Yeah, Destiny Item Manager. manager. Yeah, yeah. Now, now getting into the, the big boy tools. Yeah, and I hate it so much. Yeah. Um, bright side is, I know what is a good, really good role in my inventory now because it's all got a little thumbs up next to it saying, hey, right. this is a good role. Yep. Um, That's good stuff. Hit those like so buttons. I may om- That's right. You get a little ching. Keep on, keep yep. on. I, was, I hate you. I was going to say it. And you stole it from me. I hate you so much. Oh. I'm so mad. Like, you have no idea. Um, I hate you so much. Uh, but yes, so I've been playing around with that. It is genuinely a, a very helpful tool. Yeah. It's also super complicated, so I'm not looking forward to jumping jumping down the loadouts page because yeah. yeah, Moon asked the question in the Discord of like, how do I know what good roles are on my guns? And we gave him kind of two options. One is the website light.gg, which is a really solid website, but I find their um the implementation of what communities thinks are good roles and god roles on weapons a little bit confusing. Um, I like how uh, Dim does it, where you can look at a gun and it'll say, like, this is a good role overall, and here are the perks in the columns that the community recommends overall. Obviously, you don't have to use them if they don't fit your playstyle, but it's sort of like these are the considered the best perks on this gun. Um, yeah. And it, it even gives little notes like, oh, this is a really good role for PvP, yeah. but use it as a backup PvP role if you don't Correct. have a, a, an additional one. And the reason why I'm going down this rabbit hole is because I have a tendency when I'm playing Destiny or any game, really, I start, I play, I stop. I don't want to micromanage. I almost swore that. I don't <laughs> want to micromanage stuff mm-hmm. while I'm in the middle of stuff because, unfortunately... I have an Xbox Series X, which means my load time, provided I get in a lobby with some pretty good people, is next to none to go into, like, raids and strikes and things like that. Yeah. So I don't have five minutes of load time to sit there and go, well, I like that role and I don't like that role in my inventory. So when I'm playing, I will start playing, I will do all of my stuff, I will stop playing, and then before I power down the game, I will go to my vault and I will throw everything into the vault (laughs) you just push them all right off the table into the vault (laughs) exactly then i'll go to the postmaster and pick up the 15 things i didn't pick up because my inventory was full and then i'll go to the vault and i'll throw them all in the vault yep and then not look at them again because i have the guns i like to use and unless they come up again that's you know i don't really care which is a mistake because obviously this season is different different weapons with abilities compared to last season. So I'm missing out on good guns because of course. Uh because I am ending up with like 17 versions of a hand cannon that has different roles on it, different status effects, different effects and things like that. And it's just like I don't know which is best, and I'm not gonna experiment with this gun to see if mm-hmm. I like this gun better than most. Yeah. Instead, I'm just going to throw them all in the vault and ignore them. So And then break them down later for scrap. <laughs> exactly. Well, and, so and, and my, 
by that point you should know what the the better roles are or like roles that you like for your loadout or your play style or etc yeah but the, the same problem is is this season they've added like nine different additional perks into the perk yeah. pool and it's just like I don't know what anacrosmia is. I don't know right. what you know osmosis is on these. What things. does ensemble like, do? I don't know. Exactly. Now I do know it makes your weapons more powerful, faster reload, and faster draw when you're around teammates. Oh, which is right. helpful. Ensemble. Uh, yeah, so, that makes sense. Okay. So that's a good perk for my vanguard roll loadout, which is right. when I'm doing strikes and raids and things like that. But I'm lazy and I don't want to do that while I'm because. Credit where it's due. Destiny, Destiny lets you do all of that stuff in the loading. You can open up your inventory yeah. and you can play with all that stuff while the game is loading in the background. Very helpful. Thank you for that one. Yeah. Um, but I got lazy, so I didn't do that. So my current crusade is I'm going through my entirety of my vault, figuring out which weapons I like to use, which weapons I don't like to use. Like if a gun doesn't feel right or if I don't like the way it fires or anything like that, I'm just not going to use it. I'm yeah. fine with that. So I can just trash it or infuse it or whatever. So now I'm going through that using Dim and being like, well, I've got 17 different roles on this like shotgun with stasis effects, which is a seasonal drop this, mm. this season. Yeah. So I'm just going to figure out which one I like and then stick with that one and see if any better roles come up. So now I've literally my Destiny Manager, I've got like two walls of junk that I need to slowly but surely get rid of. <laughs> right. But I've I've been doing that while I've been doing other things like cooking or like watching like TV or things like that. I'm just like, this is junk, this is junk, this is key, this is infused, this is a 1324, I'm going to infuse that into something else and so on and so forth. Right, right. But yes, Destiny 2 continues to be the hellscape that Mackie fears it is, but also with the hellscape that Boston loves. So, yeah. yep. Yeah, it's I mean, one of those. If it if it clicks with you, it's going to be something really great. But I mean, it, it's it definitely isn't. I feel like if you're worried about live service games or battle passes or FOMO or stuff, Destiny Two is way better about that stuff than it was in the past. But if you're if you're allergic to any of that stuff. This isn't, there are no games out there that are good enough to say, like, oh. it, you will pull, you will be pulled in every week to play X amount of time. You will, I know it's a live service game, but you're going to love it. Like, it, it's still that stuff that you don't like about this subgenre. You don't like about MMOs, you don't like about live service games, battle passes, whatever. It's still better than it was before like they've cut down so much on the fomo but there's still going to be some of that there's still going to be unfortunately stuff that you miss because of you know this week is uh coming up is the halloween event festival of the lost it's only around for two or three weeks and then it doesn't come back until the next year so if you're not around for a couple of weeks you miss it until next year that's just kind of the nature of the beast and I don't think I would ever recommend Destiny to someone to say like, I I know it's I know it's a problem. You know I I know you have a problem with gambling. Let's go in the casino real quick. Like it's not gonna it's it's <laughs> it's, it's it is what it is on the tin. Like yeah. if yeah. if you don't like that stuff, it's not to the point where you should go just like get over it and play the game. That's I did. I did like the fact that I got a notification saying, "Oh, the festival lost has begun. Go speak to this person in the tower." Like they are not there yet. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tuesday. It'll it'll happen Tuesday. Okay. Yeah. I'll, Space I'll Grandma that. will be back on Tuesday to do the festival of the lost. Yes, and since it has been probably at least two years since I last spoke about one of these, I guess it's about time for the Lego to strike again. Oh no. Um, specifically Lego Harry Potter remastered years one to two. Mm -hmm. Enjoy writing that title down, Boston. I think that's a Lego H P R E M dot you. You're not one, supposed to abbreviate one no dash way. four. Got it. I hate you. It's it's actually all of them, thank you very much. It has both games. One dash seven. Uh, Got it. There we go. I think it's one dash eight, by the way, because 
the second one is split into two years. Yeah, but uh, I didn't. I'll, I'll look it up. I'll look it up for the show notes. Mm -hmm. I don't remember we'll either. Mm -hmm. um, but no, like it's legitimately just a next generation port of the old games. Yep. Like, and the good. load times are obviously spectacular because yeah. you know. SSD. <laughs> yeah. Yes. The, um, the shiny bricks are shinier. Yeah. Because you know, 4K. <laughs> HDR bricks. <laughs> HDR studs. I can see those little pixel lights where I need to cast my magic spells so much easier with this kind of stuff. Yeah. And yeah, it is also HDR and it is a frame rate boost game as well, just to make life nice. even more fun. Great. But this is early enough. And I don't know if this, the second game did this, but this is early enough as well, where it didn't start using the vocals from the movies yet. Right. Oh, okay. Right. It's still the stupid Lego characters Be emoting. acting out the le the actual scenes yeah. without putting any of like this stuff on it. Like I was uh, trying to explain to my friend, I was like, you don't understand like the Lego games are quality when they didn't put the, the audio from the movies in because somehow they made little Lego Hayden Christensen a better actor than Hayden Christensen did. <laughs> like it's insane how good that that acting is from a bunch of animators like i just got the invisibility cloak which i think is the end of like the halfway through the first year and little lego harry potter does a little dance and shakes his naked butt at the camera yep. it's like of course it's really good well that that was like two, when my kids started playing the lord of the rings one i hate that so annoying. well no this was still the version where they didn't talk Mm -hmm. I think the Hobbit so, was one when they had yeah. The, so the, when they the get ones. to the point where what was his name, Bowermere gets like shot up with arrows, like that's uh -huh. a pretty intense moment in the movie, and I was kind of worried uh -huh. on what would happen in the Lego game. So I, when my son got to that point, I was there watching, you know, just in case I had to shut the TV off or something. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then they do Holding something the like in your hand, like with the yeah, button, your yeah. the power but, button. Then they do something where it's like, okay, they, they make it obvious that he's hurt, and then, you know, he gets shot with a fish, and that did him in. It's like, uh -huh. right. okay, yeah, good. That's, right. Yes. <laughs> uh -huh. Like, um, the, um, the, the dead unicorn scene in the first Harry Potter, yep. where yeah. Voldemort is in the forest, literally sucking the life out of the dead unicorns. The way they do that is you go into Hagrid's hut, and, like, you see in the background something behind a curtain, and they unveil a curtain, and it's a unicorn lying down in bed like a human, like back first, mm -hmm. like paws in the air with a blanket up and a thermometer sticking out of its mouth. Right. It's like, yeah. right. That's how you know the unicorns are getting sick. It's yeah. because Hagrid has a Lego thermometer. Yeah. It's so good. Some of that stuff is going to boost up that rating a bit. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh huh. But it's so good. Like some of the really, really dumb stuff that they that they, they act out. And it gets the same message across yeah. Yeah, without being as super duper dark as it needs to be. Um, but it's the Lego games are great. I adore them. I'm really lucky I, I already own this game before revelations about certain people became known. Yes. Yeah. So I'm glad I spent the money beforehand. Yeah. yeah the, um, both of those are really good games. Yeah. Um, and as always, the achievements are still broken as hell for Lego games. Oh God! Every every game. You like, would think after a couple of years they would just release a patch that is just an okay button to unlock all achievements. Yeah, because like, it does the thing, and I don't know if they've got. I can't remember if they've got better with this, but I was playing a co-op, and I started the game. I loaded the game. I hosted the game. I didn't run anybody over in a cart, but I got the achievement for running 10 people over with a, with a cart. Mm -hmm. And then we finished the first year, and then the person I was playing with got the achievement for completing the first year, and I didn't. Right. So I have to replay the first year yeah. to get the achievement for completing the first year. And, it's, yeah, and like, it's like, why doesn't everybody just get the achievement? Like, it doesn't, it doesn't even matter. You were if someone, there. Yeah. It, it doesn't even matter if someone like, we talked about this on pup yesterday. Like it, we're talking about it on Diablo two, where it's like, it doesn't matter for these offline stuff. If someone's been there for two minutes and they finished for year one and they got the achievement. 
Who cares? It's not this mm-hmm. online competitive multiplayer shooter. It doesn't matter. Yeah. I don't I don't understand how you break that. Like because surely it is a case of you finish that level, it checks to see if you have the achievement and if you do not, it says give this achievement. That's right. a, From what I understand, that's how achievements work. It's like it reads There's a piece like of a code flag. And says, yeah. Yeah, it's like read a piece of code is like if this person has this achievement, then that's fine, do nothing. If they don't have this achievement, give it to them. But yeah. then how does that work in co-op games when literally I am the host, it's my save file, it's my like thing, everything is mine, but I don't get that achievement. Yeah, you like, would think it, it would say like only give the achievement to the player who's designated as the host or like player one or whatever if you gotta restrict it like that. But it's like, nah, player two can get it. Player one though, no thank you. Just like, I was going to say, I wonder if, if it was broken enough for the next time you turn on the game in single player, all of a sudden that achievement pops for you. <laughs> Probably. Nope, because I tried that mm-hmm. too. Oh, yeah. man. Yeah. Were you doing couch co-op or online co-op? Uh, couch co-op. Uh, yeah. So. Is, is this still the one where the, the bar the separating screen. yeah moves? Yeah. That makes my wife so sick. <laughs> <laughs> when, when that bar starts twirling. <laughs> listen, listen. Now, as somebody who went through the hellhole that was the Lego games without the adaptive split screen, yeah. when you literally are dragging someone using the edge of the screen to move them yeah. forward, yeah. it's, it is it's so much better. It's not a it's perfect better, solution, because it, it can it, get a yeah. little wild. <laughs> It's it's a bit yeah, especially with my kids. Like my wife would play it with my kids, also, especially the uh, Marvel superheroes one. So oh. you've got people flying back and forth across the screen, specifically my daughter, and you literally see that bar twirling around. <laughs> uh huh. Your TV. Your wife's over there, green at the gills, like. God. <laughs> my favorite part of that is how it messes with the camera angle. Yeah. Like how like. Sometimes you're trying to solve a puzzle and you can't because the camera is confused. So it's like slightly further out because it's an adaptive mm-hmm. screen. It's like, no, no. When I'm here, the camera is supposed to be nice and tight so yeah. I can see these books on the shelf that I need right. to reorganize. Come on over yeah. here, Hermione. But, you know, it, it's fine. It, it works a lot better than the, the you are yeah. stuck on the same screen one. Like, so much. Um, I can't remember what the first adaptive split screen one they did was, but it was groundbreaking when it came I think it was, I think it was Lego Indiana Jones of all games, or like one of the... I think you're right, but I think it was specifically the last Lego Indiana Jones that came out and it had the fourth movie included yeah, in it as well. I think so. Yeah. It was either that or it was like the third Pirates of the Caribbean, because I remember playing it playing a couch co-op and they they put it in there and i was just like why is this swing bar moving what are you doing what <laughs> no oh, one warned oh. me about this yeah it's oh man it's really great i yep. like I, I love it yep. it's so fantastic it's one of the better ones <clears throat> yes um so lego harry potter that's fine i will eventually in six months i'm sure get every achievement in that game and, <laughs> and uninstall it because it's a lego game so yep. enjoy those 100% achievements and collect 60 billion oh, studs and everything else that that comes with. Kill Harry with Voldemort in X level. Uh, I'd kill every version of Harry, every version of Harry with Voldemort in free play. Ah, okay. And then spoil alert, there's like 90 different variations of Harry Potter. There's a, there's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so you've got Harry, you've got Harry in his human clothes, you've got Harry in the sweater, you've got Harry in his uniform, you've got Harry a towel. in his towel. <laughs> and like that's just the first year. Right. <clears throat> oh, man. Seven Harrys per year, apparently. <laughs> that uh, sounds horrible. And that achievement is actually called What If, which is hilarious. Oh um, boy. I because I love those references. They do a good job with the achievements, except you know that they're broken. Um, yeah. No, no little things. Yes. But it's fine, it's fun, Lego is great. Um, I really need to get myself a real Lego kit at some point soon, because I want to do Lego, like, yeah. hardcore. <laughs> hey, guess what? Advertising works. That's right. <laughs> Versus. Uh, and my final game this week, and I am taking it this week, it's Dying Light. The mm. first one, obviously, not the sequel. We don't have codes, although I'm just saying if you want to throw four codes our way, I'm sure we can do some, you know. 100%. 
some early reveals before release day. We've all got fans at gmail.com. Uh-huh. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, Xbox preferred platform. Thank you very much as well. Yes. Um, ding, ding, ding. So yeah, Dying Light. It continues to be the dumbest game I've played in a long time, but also one of the most fun. That's the best combo. Yes. Especially when now there is four of us playing. Because oh, no. that turned. We did. <laughs> yes. uh, we did get Justin's Xbox back. He did install it and uh, we invited him to play. And then, like an hour after I sent the invite, he joined in. So, very Justin of him. <laughs> um, and then, and then the sneaky little boy tries to jump in with his fully complete game character. And it's like, no, no, no. Yeah. No, no, That's no, not what no, we're no. doing here, sir. No, we're not doing that. We, the struggle is real with us. We need to work our way from the bottom. Now we're here. Um, <laughs> it. <laughs> I, I just love that really sad, annoyed, depressed sigh that you just gave there, Boston. <laughs> it was just the best thing ever. <laughs> um, it's a, The story doesn't matter. It's No, no one knows what's happening. Yeah, yeah. zombies. It's Get a city that's infested with zombies. There's a humanitarian company who mm. is trying to help. Wink. Here, here you go. Here's the humanitarian company trying to help. Burn all of the antidotes, please. Thank you. Right. Um, it's it's every time there's some story happening, it's the four of us ragging and just poking holes through the quote unquote plot uh -huh. of mm. the story. <laughs> yeah. So we should talk about the bridge mission because you yeah. Know, that was the biggest that, one that I just had a field day with. <laughs> yes. So apparently as part of the rescue plans, they tried to do this whole thing where they installed like super high power UV lights on this bridge because the infected don't like UV lights. So they tend to stay away from them, uh, specifically the volatile ones. However, when they tried to operate these lights, it blew the power grid. So then the lights didn't work. So then obviously the bridge kind of collapsed. Hmm. Now you're in this tower, and this guy's like, I've got this really great idea, but I need like 4,000 bajillion watt bulbs. Like he's Doc Brown from Back to the Future. Right. Um, and like roast the a only ones with we... these from like 400 feet away. <laughs> yeah. Like, and the only ones available are the ones from this bridge, which, you know, was a catastrophe. And he's like, But yeah, you, you did put the power grid back on. And I know it's more dangerous at night, but the only way to know which bulbs work is to go to the bridge at night when all of the monsters are trying to hunt you. Climb up the outside edge of this bridge because we're that kind of stupid people. <laughs> like, tightrope walk across the frame structure, like, you know, a hundred something feet in the air where mm. the game does that stupid swaying effect. So you just oh, get no. nauseous the whole Which time. Which we still don't know if we're supposed to be counteracting that or if that's just there for feel. But right. my God, do uh -huh. we all feel it? <laughs> yes. And then like slowly creep across these bars and unplug the, the lights that work and then go up another floor until you're at the top of this suspension bridge and do it again. It's like, why are we doing this at night? <laughs> right. Like, I could as, just bring them all as, back and you try them there. That's how exactly. It, as yeah. Nim said, it was like, treat them like Christmas tree bulbs. You plug them in. If it doesn't work, you switch it out and you plug yeah. it in again. Like, I can, I, I can not, bring a box with me. And then, I, and then I was like, oh, hey, I figured it out, guys. In this game world, for their physics, light bulbs don't work during the day. <laughs> uh <-huh>. Right. <laughs> how am I going to yeah. see them? The sun is up. <laughs> yeah, we're not even going to get into the, the the Soul Blade conversation that you and Rob had a heated debate about. Oh God, while you yeah, to, oh, boy. through the school, we went deep. Um, <laughs> yes, that was literally shooting zombies. Yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> shooting zombies, trying to rescue people, and then it's just like, oh yeah, by the way, <laughs> this Soul Blade is BS, and this is why. And it's like, like, dude, I just jumped sixty feet in the air by like using a zombie as a propeller. So right. don't even talk right. to me about. Well, well, yeah, okay. So we, we'll get into it a little bit. That was my biggest thing. That we were just ragging on each other, having fun, and that we found this massive saw blade. And he's like, "Why would this even be here? He wouldn't even use this for this." And basically, it had broken down to. I'm like, so out of this entire game, this one saw blade that we just happened to walk by is a thing that completely broke the experience right. of this game right. for you. This was the thing. <laughs> yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Never mind, you know, the people who explode or anything like that. Like just yeah. just the saw blade. We were just uh, ragging no, on each other. So. <laughs> it was it was dumb fun. It was genuinely just chilling out, having a laugh, having a having a good time, making fun of the game and each other as much as we possibly could. Mm-hmm. The way you do, kind of thing. Um, progression has been made, so we're now 22% of the way through the story mission, so, oh, oh, Ooh. and we did get the polyamory achievement as well, which is to do five quests uh, while in a party right. of four. Nice. Uh, so, we got that one all done and dusted. Do we, we need to talk about Justin? Arm. <laughs> yes, I, yeah, I finally have a gun at last. After, Ooh, like, nice. two weeks of waiting for a gun, I finally have one, because I gave mine up for the mission, whereas these idiots didn't. And then, anytime we ran across somebody who had a gun, they didn't drop a gun, because these guys all stole the gun and didn't let me have one. It was great. Um, yeah, he's full of it, because we ran into a whole area that was nothing but guns. And there was actually I'm, one of them, there was one of them where you're like, I'm not seeing any guns, all I see are these things, and I'm staring at a gun in my game. I'm like, <laughs> I guess you got the short end then. <laughs> so. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, we should probably have a conversation about Justin. Um, yep. Justin, I love you, and I say this with all of the love in my heart. It's hilarious playing games with you, and I adore it, because... <laughs> The game has a fast travel thing where, like, you, when somebody's trying to start a story mission, you can't start the mission until everybody is present. Mm-hmm. So let's say, Boston, you die and you get sent back to the set last safe room. If we're at the objective, we hit X to talk to them and it pops up on your screen. It's like, people are waiting for you. Hold the back button to fast travel to the destination. Oh, nice. That's great. It's the only is... fast travel in this game. <laughs> okay. Yes. But it's super duper useful. Um, yeah. So... While we were waiting for Rob to put his children to bed, um, we were just messing around, running around the map, and then all of a sudden, Justin is nowhere to be seen. The other direction. He's talking, <laughs> yeah, he's talking about swimming in a cave and finding a bunch of zombies, which <laughs> I didn't know this. It's the Destiny reference, dude. Oh, the loot cave. That's great. It's the loot cave. Nice. Um, Two and then when you kill enough zombies, it, it's like patch 1.0.2 deployed. Everything is fine now, and then no more zombies spawn. That, that's really clever. Great. Uh huh. So we were all having a good time doing all of that. So then when Rob gets back, it's like, okay, let's start handing in some of these missions. So there's three of us standing there waiting to be able to talk to this person, and a little brown arrow is running all different directions in the map. <laughs> And it's like, Justin, hey, Justin, hold the back button, please. Just, just do the thing yeah. on the screen. And the first time, he was just like, well, I'm just trying to find you guys. And he's like, just hold the button. We're like half an hour away, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. uh, and then my favorite one was the, he was close enough to where he didn't need to do it. He didn't need to do the fast travel thing. But my favorite is like, Justin, we're waiting for you. And he's like, okay, okay, I'm on my way. And then he jumps like into the like little enclave where we are, there's a bunch of like stacks of cars around, and then starts jumping across the top of these cars backwards and forwards. Like <laughs> Justin, <laughs> Justin, hey buddy, like buddy, <laughs> Justin, we're right here. Snapping your fingers, like hey, 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 like, jingling the keys. <laughs> come towards us, Justin, Justin. Like okay, now we're gonna sleep and wait for night. So we're all like three of us phased into each other, like some weird hobgoblin, three arm, six armed person, <laughs> like halt pressing the X button to try and wait for night. And then, like, literally five feet away is Justin, just <laughs> just outside of the range <laughs> to allow us to just do it. It's like, hey, Justin, Justin. What are you guys doing over two there? Steps forward. Two steps forward, Justin, please. Justin, Come on over. Justin, Which, step to be fair, that's happened to me, too, where I was pretty close to you guys, and I think I just took, oh, like, yeah. an in- in-game one step, and then the cutscene started. And I'm mm-hmm. like, no, I'm like right next to you guys. It should just be working. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. You literally stopped. Like, you're not, you're not wrong. It wasn't, it probably wasn't even a full step. It was like a half step because I didn't even see you move and the cutscene started. And I was like, yeah. okay, so he is. His nose right is on the, the edge. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, you know, it's, it's stupid. It's fun. Most of us have grappling hooks now because Justin's a late developer. He's a late bloomer, one might say. Yeah. Um, and we're all just like running around, killing zombies, constantly getting attacked by like the fast ones because some people have guns and just are obsessed with constantly using them. Yeah. No, Why are no, all the zombies okay, looking at me? Blam, 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 blam. 
Hey, it's uh-huh. up to you out a couple of times, too, where I was on the other side of an area, and I just start shooting things, and everyone comes running at me, and I'm like, ha, see you suckers later. <laughs> yeah, and honestly, it's fine, because, like, I will... Usually I'm the one in front, so I'll like run into like, oh, there's two of these guys with like machetes attacking this civilian, and I'll be like, come on guys, come and get me, come and get me. I have friends with guns, and then you'll all roll up behind me like a firing squad and just be like, blah blah blah, and then they'll be like, say, the last time you did that, I came around the corner just as a guy was about to attack you and unloaded my double barrel shotgun into him and killed him before he even got to you. <laughs> nice. like, well, yep, the rest of us it's are here. Ridiculous. And. <laughs> Yeah, because one of the reasons I was so annoyed about a gun is because I didn't have the harem shooting club achievement, which is to kill 50 people with a gun. And I was talking about, I was like, I just want a gun to get this achievement. <laughs> and then you were like, what achievement is, is it? And I was like, you've already got it, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to worry about it. <laughs> like, legitimately, you already, you had it like six mm-hmm. hours ago in game time. You're fine. I just mm-hmm. need a gun so I can get like six more people. I was like, um, what, you had said it was something like kill 50 zombies or something like or 100 zombies or something yeah it's yeah like, and literally it's 50 people with a firearm and you yeah, had it I, I got it within got like, yeah i got it within like 20 30 minutes of having a fire yeah because <laughs> uh-huh. that's how you play and that is fine yeah, i will cares. just run away from all of the freaks but the game is still fun like it's still stupid fun to go around and like it's got a really solid, like, the the skill tree in the game is really solid, where you genuinely do feel like you are getting better, faster, more powerful, or whatever, oh, yeah. as you are unlocking all of that stuff. So, like, I'm enjoying playing it, and it's fun to play with the bros, so, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> it, it's, it's just stupid fun, and I'm enjoying it, and I don't care about the story, or the man with the mom with the bucket head in the house, I, whatever. You give me what I need, you give me the XP, and that's fine. I don't yeah. care. Like, that's how it works I'll here. take your rewards. The kid upset with explosions. Yes. Yep. The chess kid game that we're playing. Explosions. Checkers, thank you very much. Or checkers, let's not give yeah. these. Let's not give these people more credit than this do. We're playing checkers, and whoever we're playing against is the worst player of checkers I've ever seen <laughs> in my life. Um, but no, it, it's fun. It's dumb. Anything else on Dying Light, Nim? Not really. I mean, we were we did our first, which none of us really noticed. We stayed out all night, one night uh-huh. for the game, which oh, like nice. I said, none of us game. really noticed because we were just running across. The grappling hook is still awesome. Uh, the towers still suck. We just figured out yesterday how to climb down ladders because we assumed uh-huh. it wasn't possible. Okay. But it turns out <laughs> if you stand on the top of them and hit X, you can go down them, which... Still sucks because I got to the bottom of a ladder and my character just let go, and then Moon sees me falling down the side of a tower that he's trying to climb down. Oh no! <laughs> happened to grab a bar on my way down, so I didn't die. <laughs> Jeez, it's between one that, of the best things. Go ahead. I was gonna say between that and zip lines because we figured out a couple times ago that you have to hold down the button to stay on the zip line. You don't just jump on the zip line and let go because. That's how I fell off of a tower last time, so... Yep. And, like, that's my favorite thing about this kind of open world game. Like, Crackdown, things like this, where you can... It's got the mobility to explore. It's one of the reasons I love Assassin's Creed Unity as well. It's like, yeah, everyone's going to the same place, but everybody is taking different routes. Mm-hmm. So, like, when we were on top of that bridge mission, like, you could get to the very, very top of the okay. bridge, and there's a stupid flag up there that's, like... Here's a tiny little edge off the side of this 700 foot drop, and your character's doing the sway thing. Just creep along it to grab this flag for a collectible. Sure, why not? Oh boy. But we're doing that, and like the scaffolding that we're climbing up as we're going. And like I'm on the inside of the scaffolding doing the path and like the turn around and the jump up to the next ledge and then the turn around. And then I do that and I turn around, and then there's Nymph on the outside edge of the scaffold and just climb over like monkey bars. <laughs> and it's just like, just jumping okay. from edge to edge, figuring it out, sure. see if I can make Why it. Not? Yeah, That's great. Well, and then no. once we did get to that other <clears throat> side, you were like, because we've had it before where jumping in water has, like, killed us, or at least hurt. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And so Moon's like, I think there's an achievement for jumping off a high, the highest point in the water, and then he just throws himself off the bridge, and we're just waiting to see if he dies or not, and he cleared, and it's like, alright, so then the rest of us just jump <laughs> off the bridge. <laughs> yep. Except for Justin, who was at the start of the bridge. 
I love yeah. you, Justin. <laughs> I was like, because I, I vaulted off of Rob's back because he was standing there waiting to see if your thing popped. You said you hit water, so I ran up, jumped off Rob's back, got super high up in the air. <laughs> oh, jeez. <just> fell. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And yeah. again, it's got that free running thing where the flow just feels good when you start to nail it and you're just like, cool, I'm a badass. Mm-hmm. And then you fall off a building and your legs snap. <laughs> right. Yep. Yeah. Or you run with Anima is... because you're a fat boy and <laughs> Yes. <laughs> hey man, hey. I I put all my free running perks into like sliding and jumping. I don't care about stamina. I I will slide and jump my way there. It's fine. Oh no, I, I was talking about my character because it never seems to fail, specifically during the night segments where everyone's like three blocks ahead of me and my guy's like huffing and puffing. And I'm like, <laughs> I, need, I need to stop. I need chocolate. <laughs> Hold on, guys. You are literally wearing an outfit made of kitchen utensils. Oh yeah, that's yeah we. <laughs> So you can choose your outfits and stuff that you get to wear. And Moon, you're wearing like what a suit? I think it was. Yes, I'm. I I look like a suave James Bond kind of guy. Yeah, nice. Complete opposite to me. Uh, Rob has a hockey mask and a t-shirt on, and then Justin has a hockey mask and like an Irish shirt on or something. (laughs) And yeah, I'm walking around with like pots and kitchen utensils taped to me, like it's a. Like an like a knight. It looks yeah. like a knight of the kitchen. It's that's ridiculous. Great. And I just thought it was the dumbest, funniest thing, so that's what I've stuck with. Yeah. <laughs> if I'm going to be bit, it should be through the cheese grater. Right. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Dying Light, it, it's, it's great. It's fun. I'm enjoying it. Uh, we will continue playing it. And I'm still annoyed with myself that I waited this long to play it. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm glad I did because I haven't been caught up in any of the hype surrounding Dying Light 2 because I didn't care until now. Hmm. So now I can beat this game and then politely and patiently wait for the new game and see how that goes. I know they're putting a lot of emphasis on the story in Dying Light 2, so that should be real interesting to see how that goes considering Hmm. we legit don't care about any of the people in this game. Yeah. Yeah. Is, when is the second one supposed to come out? February next year, I think. Probably now. February oh, okay. 20th, like every other game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, more than likely. Uh, but yes, that is all I've been playing. Nim, take it away. Cool. So, Tales of Arise. I have hit the turning point, and oh. I am back to not knowing what is going on in this game anymore. <laughs> yes. Um, <clears throat> I won't get into it a whole lot just because of spoilers but there's a lot of side stuff that have just been dumped on me that now require me to be like 30 40 levels higher than i currently am right now wow so it's a lot of end game <laughs> content that all of a sudden i have that mm. yeah because i think right now my party is around 37 36 to 37 um there was a temple that had just opened up that it doesn't none of the quests give you like a level thing where it's like oh you should be this level or you know this whatever to start this so i saved before i went to the temple which i'm glad i did because your characters are constantly in like a battle screen um Mm. which basically means they run around with their weapons out which never happens right and then you get attacked and you just start fighting right then and there it doesn't move you to a different screen Mm. or anything interesting and the first set of enemies i came across were all level 60 oh against my level 36 37 characters right so i was you're not even trying then what are you doing (laughs) i beat them okay i was able to beat them it took a while but then someone in my party makes mention that oh yeah there's probably a big baddie at the end of all of this so we'll probably have to beat them to be able to get out of it and i'm like okay um well i'll just jump out of here it won't let me leave the temple Uh uh-huh so i had Ah. to basically go back to the title screen and then reload to my save before i went to the temple because (laughs) i'm not even going to waste time because chances are i'm not going to be able to beat that boss yeah in like 10 (laughs) hours you'll just wipe that the floor with that temple anyway yeah exactly um so that's going on doing a lot of side quests stuff like that um figuring out um like it looks like i may get a vehicle soon Ooh. I don't know how or why because it's not set up for that kind of exploration. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, it's still a fun game. My title screen intro has changed when you turn the game on and all that stuff. Ooh. Now I've got a completely different one. Oh, I, lo- I love that. Way different things going on than when I started. So it's nice. a cool game. 
Uh, next game, Genshin Impact. Uh, they <laughs> they have event, an event going on this week where Is it's for the... Games? No, not yet. It's for the Stove God. Um, mm, yes. I mm. have already unlocked and maxed out the refinement on a Claymore sword that is just a giant tuna. Uh, I love and it. When you, and when you um, attack with this tuna, it summons another tuna that does 200 times attack damage as God. AoE. I love it. Yeah. It's great. So that's been interesting. I haven't fully maxed this one out yet. My son tells me great things about it. I'm like, all right, cool. I hear so, great things about the tuna. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, is it bumblebee tuna? No. <laughs> <laughs> this is that's a deep cool. That, Thank that's you, a, anybody who gets that. That's that's a cut, man. <laughs> um, but I'm still doing a lot of the fishing stuff. Um, it sounds like we're supposed to be getting another update, a 2.2 update this coming Thursday. That's supposed to add even more islands or something. Oh, jeez. Okay. Which I'm not even done with the crap right now that they have in the new stuff that they've right. added so this, they're pushing out a lot of content yeah i do wish that they would kind of i don't know be better to their fan base just a little bit yeah because their anniversary stuff it didn't seem like they were going to do anything with it until a lot of people got mad and did a lot of crappy things yeah the the fan base doing a lot of harassment of voice actors again it's like yes me you're not wrong that uh, Mihoyo should have given you like a free five star pull. That's like the the minimum for anniversary events. Don't harass people whose job it is to use their voice to voice characters in games they probably don't play. They're working on like five games later than that. Like, don't be terrible. Yeah. But there's besides that, there's other things with this game. Like, hey, they can finally get rid of the resin system because that's just been crap since day one. Uh, resin's and... always been bad. Yeah. yeah. Um. But outside of that, though, apparently the uh, American or the English voice actor for Child, mm -hmm. um, had a collapsed lung. Jeez. Last week, week before maybe, um, and he is finally doing better now. There was a little nice. bit of worry, but he apparently is fully recovered. So everyone's all geeked out about the new Child banner that's supposed to be coming out ah, with the two point two. So. I see. Yes. So there's a lot of fun stuff. Still fishing. Still just yeah. trying to max out my characters, which isn't going well because the resin system sucks, but whatever. <laughs> right. It's it's a fun game to just kind of like what I do, where I just I jump in, you know, knock out my dailies, do a couple things here and there with my kids, play co-op with them, and then yeah. just duck back out. And yeah. that's it's great for that. It's not great for trying to min-max characters and all that stuff unless you're someone who's just got tons of money to drop on just yes. random crap, which yeah. may I suggest visiting our Patreon page. At That's right. <laughs> Patreon.com slash uh -huh. one-on-one. Yep. The ones and numbers. That's right. So <laughs> outside of that, my last game that I have, besides Dying Light, uh, is Marvel's Avenger. Oh, I yeah. Just beat oh, the... Yes. Yep. I just beat the campaign for that before the podcast started, and so now my son and I can do co-op this week without having the rest of the stuff spoiled for us. <laughs> spoiled. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't... So, Captain America is an okay character. Mm -hmm. the... Hold on, hold on. Hold on. We need to make sure that we are 100% clear. You are talking about in the game, not in the comics universe. Because you're going to get some hate if you just say that. Okay. Hey, man, none so of us are comics yeah. geeks. Like, <clears throat> I feel like so, anybody in comics who's ever good at some point is like, all right, here we go. I'm going to kill everybody. It's like, okay, great. Yeah. Uh, true. I like Deadpool because he's a douche. Mm -hmm. take, yep. take my opinions of Marvel characters with a <laughs> grain of salt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's your grain of salt, so. <laughs> um. But in this game, like, everyone has traversal abilities where, like, Iron Man and Thor obviously can fly. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Hulk can jump high, and he can do, like, a wall run. Yeah. Captain he's America... Captain his shield. No, Captain America, just out of the blue, it's like, oh, yeah, he's the only character that can double jump. Okay. Sure. 
Why not? Okay. And okay. I was talking with my son about this. It's like, it feels really weird that he double jumps. Like, I don't understand why they just didn't give him, I don't know, like half of what the Hulk can jump. Right. Yeah. Because he's like supposed to be better than an Olympian and Olympians can jump really high. He also does the wall running, which I completely forgot about because there was a segment where that came up as I'm playing as Cap. And I'm mm. like, I don't know what to do here. I'm in zero G. Let me jump through this. And nope. Right. And then I re- and then I'm looking at the wall. I'm like, that looks like I can run against that. Oh, yep, he can do that. Okay, cool. So here we go. Do everything. <laughs> yeah. Like the <clears throat> the dude jumps out of planes without parachutes. Surely yeah. he can jump a little bit higher than normal. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> but whatever. The the other issue that I have with Captain America in this game is that when you do the final mission, he is kind of your main character that you're playing as and then eventually you can swap with other characters but (laughs) you just get him and he is not prepped or leveled for what you're fighting against right so that kind of sucks look who's back (laughs) he's 12 levels below it's like no Uh it's like i can go ahead can we call this type of game a bluta if it's like a beat em up looting looting game there you go you could if you wanted to, someone's probably going to sue us. We're like, that's that's my company's name. I it's, I make Uber ink is cartridges. Cutting it pretty close there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's probably in someone's market and copyright already for the next big thing. That's uh, right, guarantee you. But his fighting style and all that, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just they they don't bring him up to where the rest of your characters are at, and to all of a sudden have to use him in the last mission of the game mm-hmm. when he is not prepped for that kind of sucks and makes it last a little bit longer than it needs to. (laughs) Mm, Right. But outside of that, though, still pretty fun. I enjoyed it. Um, We are looking forward to doing some of the co-op stuff. The first thing that we can do is unlock Kate Bishop. Oh, cool. Um, And then there's, like, a whole host of DLC stuff that we have to go through. Like, the Wakanda one is the last one that we do. But there's just, like, so much crap that it keeps trying to throw at us. And it's like, oh, you need to do this, this, and this. And it's like, no, I need to do this first. And then right. I will move on to the newest one. So right. um, the item <laughs> that we get, we get, like, all the Stark technology costumes for everyone. So, like, Captain America and Black Widow have LED eyes for I don't know why. They, yeah. They look like movie costumes. Like, when... S- <laughs> Like, you guys remember when Power Rangers went, like, their first movie, how they Mm -hmm. had, like, a movie version of the costume? Yeah. Uh Yeah. This is what that looks like, where it's, like, the RGB of superheroes. Right, right. Where there's just lights (laughs) everywhere, and there's no reason for there to be LEDs there. Avengers brought to you by Razor. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) It's... It looks weird, but whatever. There's, like, a ton of costumes you can unlock anyway, but the artifact that we get... Um, it increases your abilities quite a bit, and there's like some new like counter move thing where it's like you double tap on the sticks, and all of a sudden they do like this burst attack or something. Huh. It's like, all right, yeah, that sounds cool. Why not? So we're going to mess around with that. All the characters can equip it and use it independent of each other. So if you upgrade it on, say, like Captain America, he'll have it equipped on there, and then if you play as Black Wid- Widow, you equip it on her. Cap will still keep it. Black Widow will keep her version, but you have to upgrade it on her separately. It doesn't gotcha. stay like it doesn't move in between characters, which sure. is kind of weird. But whatever. So yeah, that's that's it. It's it's an all right game. Yeah, we'll we'll see how the co op goes. We'll see how much crap's going on. Aiden is all about Thor for some reason. Okay, I that's don't cool. know why. It's because he's creepy. Yeah, I guess I do. <laughs> really like the fact that when you get Thor back, he has a t-shirt on with a Hi My Name Is sticker on it, <laughs> and it says it doesn't say Thor, it says like Dave or something on it. Oh, So, when he's being all godlike in a thunderstorm and all you can see is just this t-shirt that says Hi My Name Is Dave on it, it's like, I want that costume. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. <clears throat> but yeah, that's all I've been playing this week. <laughs> nice. Um, the PS5 version of Art of Rally came out. Um, I had previously been playing that on Series X. Uh, obviously the 
largest improvement is it loads way faster. Um, and uh, I had a I had a problem with Art of Rally on the Series X, and I wasn't sure. Had a bit of a rocky launch, needed a bunch of patches. I wasn't sure how much of this was surrounding that. But I had a problem with the rumble, and I eventually just had to turn it off. Because they have a, like a rumble intensity setting, and I even turned it down to 10%. It was still, essentially every time you shifted, it would rumble forever. Uh, and it seemed like the rumble would just get stuck at some point, so it was just rumbling for the rest of the track. Um, I didn't turn it off initially on the PS5 because they were selling like haptics and the, the advanced rumble and resistance and all that stuff. So I said, all right, let's do a couple of races with it on. It's still, I expect there to be a rumble when you like downshift or you, you shift up. I expect there to be a rumble because that feels good in car games. Um, like when your car lands after a jump, there should be a rumble on that stuff. But still has the problem where, like, I expect a rumble to last. Let's say you sh you shift down. I expect the rumble to last for, like, a second. It's lasting for, like, five or six seconds. So you're, you're That's like, weird. trying to make the next turn, and it's still, brrr, like, it's still doing its thing. That... That's frustrating. Like it's, and this is like one of the most first world problems, but it just, it doesn't feel good when you're using it. The uh, haptics, I don't think are implemented super well. It really seems like certain things rumble on the left side of the controller and certain things rumble on the right. And that's really it. There's no like zones or intensity or anything like that. Um, and then the uh, res uh, uh, the triggers, the resistance on the triggers isn't super great. So it's not like a showpiece or anything. It's not like Returnal or Ratchet and Clank or, or Astro's Playroom even, where it's like, all right, hold this controller and just mess around. There's some cool stuff. Um, yeah. But it's not to the point where it's like going to break my controller or anything. It's just fine. I should say, Control also does uh, use the controller really nicely too. Um, you can feel each one of her footsteps as you walk through. It's like really, really minor. It's really great. Um, but otherwise, exactly the same as the Series X one. It seems like there's a couple of extra um, settings in there now in the options menu. But if I, I bet if I was to go on the Series X version, they'd probably put that in on both versions anyway. So, um, Art of Rally is still great. Looking forward to playing a lot of it even more. The, I completed the, the Series X version, as far as I can tell, um, and uh, sort of looking back, looking forward to getting going through this over the next like six months or a year, just really slowly. It's great. Um, speaking of Series X, played a bunch more Sable. Uh, finally got through the uh, tutorial area, which is actually pretty good. Um, uh Thankfully, they've put out a bunch of patches for it, so I was getting some really bad frame rate hitches when it would autosave. Um, looks like that's way better now. I'm not sure if it's totally eliminated, but I've got to play a bunch more. Um, you go through a really great tutorial. You get the the storyline that's going on, which is essentially like it's your turn to go out in the world and figure out what you want to be, um, and as part of you like getting this honor to go do it, it teaches you all the tutorial stuff. Um, I have built my own, uh, essentially like the motor, like the sand motorcycle they give you. <clears throat> you build your own so you get a much cooler looking one than like the garbage training one you have. Um, that thing looks super cool and immediately they're like, here's a bunch of parts you can put on and paint styles and stuff. And I'm like, yeah, all right. That's, yes, this is what I want to do. Great. Okay. Um, and essentially, at the end of the tutorial, they're like, all right, that giant gate that was closed before, go on, go through and explore the world. And it opens into this area that's like seven or eight times bigger than the tutorial area. And they're like, good luck. Yes. 
And I was just like, oh, God. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Great. It's funny because we were literally talking about dying. Di when we were playing Dying Light, we were talking about Dead Island. And yeah. how, like, you're playing Dead Island and you put, like, you know, a good 60 hours into the game. And then it's like, cool. Okay. Now go to this other section of the island so you can save these people. And it's like, congratulations. Here is zone two. And it's <laughs> yeah, the exactly. same size or bigger than the beach area. And it's just like, oh, it's God. Yeah. It's, and. So far, part of what I'm liking about Sable, obviously the art style is gorgeous and like it, it's incredible looking. The soundtrack is great. Uh, Japanese Breakfast seems to have done the entire thing and it's really good. Um, the writing is really solid. But part of what I like about it is it feels like a modern open world game in the same vein of like Breath of the Wild or Phoenix Rising, something like that, but without the combat. So it's mostly just like, look at that cool thing over there, get in there, solve a puzzle, go do something with that thing. Or someone wants you to go collect three things, you pull out your visor or whatever, find some stuff, go explore and go check them out. Like it's really focused on the exploration and the puzzle solving as opposed to, now you've got a gun. You know, like, I'm not, I don't know if you get a gun or not. I, you get a gun in Hades, and that's still surprising. So I'm not entirely <laughs> sure. But, um, you know, Sable still seems great. I, I, I'm probably not going to finish that in time for top 10 this year, but um, I'm going to try my best. Uh, oh, I, God. Why would you summon the name of the beast? We are dude. so close. We're so close. Terrifying. Uh, mostly, I, I probably won't get to it for a little bit, mostly because of my last game here, Castlevania Advanced Collection. Um, I have finished Circle of the Moon uh, by the skin of my teeth. <laughs> I think I had like three health left when I defeated Dracula in probably the hardest Dracula fight in in any of the, the sort of Symphony Night and post metroidvanias it's brutal like both forms are just really rough um i still really like circle of the moon i think it's it's like this really interesting relic for lack of a better term i'm sorry for the pun um because it's like one foot is in the old castlevania like it is a tough game there are very few bosses. There are nearly no healing items. Um, there's, like, most of your movement stuff isn't huge and flashy. And it you're still using a whip. You're still, like, throwing crosses and holy waters. Like, it's, it's a fairly traditional Castlevania thing. But on the other side, you got the map. You got warp points. You have the save rooms. Like, it's, it's very much a, a Metroidvania. And on that side of the fence, it has the DSS system where you're kind of mixing and matching cards to make either your sub weapons different or you're summoning stuff or you're increasing your luck or you're healing while you're standing still. You know, there, there's, there's a bunch of cool effects to it. So it's kind of neat to see it. It's almost this transitional game between here's the level based Castlevania whip sort of games and the symphony of the night and later on sort of ega metrovania thing um so it's 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 cool i'm i'm seeing some people online saying like oh you should buy this but only play aria of sorrow that's the only one that's worth it and it's like i genuinely don't think so like i think castle the, or circle of the moon is still a really cool game um and i think it's it didn't take me super long i think i beat it in like eight hours um and that was well, like with largely 100 percenting it um so like it's not a it's not a super long thing um it's just some of the bosses are pretty tough you're gonna be trying them a couple of times um on the other end of the spectrum i started and finished harmony dissonance because that game is <laughs> short i beat that in i got almost 200 percent in four hours and 45 minutes uh like Ooh. i blew through that game um i it's been nice playing through these games because i don't remember anything about them when did these come out 20 years ago something like that like i, GTA, I don't yeah i don't remember anything so like playing through harmony and dissonance um 
I'm like warping around and I'm I'm doing stuff and I'm like, there's way more bosses in this game. I'm having a blast. And at some point you run into death. And like half half an hour into the game, the game's like, you've you've you're done with 20% of the map. Good job. And I was like, that's too fast. What is happening? I don't remember any okay. But eventually you run into death. Minor spoilers here. Um he oh, goes whoa, like whoa, whoa, hold on. You run into death in no, uh, what he says, what he says is uh, is a minor spoiler. If anyone's going in like truly blind, um, he goes, uh, "Have you noticed what you've been doing?" And the main character is like, "No, I don't." And Death is like, "God, you're stupid. You've been warping between two different castles, haven't you noticed that?" And I'm just like, "Oh my god, that's right!" And like, as soon as you're done with that conversation, it gives you the three maps where it's Castle A, Castle B, and the the two smushed on top of each other. And it's like. Yes. Uh-huh. Right. Okay. Cool. Yes, this game is great. Um and I forgot about like changing the tip on your whip to like this one does fire attacks, this one breaks through walls, this one now does a spinny attack. Um I forgot about collecting furniture for your room that you decorate your room with like 40 different pieces of furniture. Um Harmony is like, like this game. Yeah. Collected and collecting all sorts of chairs and paintings and stuff. Um, Harmony of Dissonance is really cool. Um, it is really easy. It is really short. Um, but I like the... I still like... Alright, you made some progress in Castle A. You hit a warp point. You now warped to the opposite side of the castle in Castle B. You need to go through there to get an item and then a warp room to go in a castle A and another spot to, like, get through there to another spot. So you're, like, crisscrossing and bouncing between these two castles to get upgrades in one to progress further in another one. Like, it's a really cool system. Um, and it's it's just a really cool game, but it's it's probably the least notable out of these two because it, it also feels like a transition point between Circle of the Moon and then Aria of Sorrow because... I started Aria of Sorrow, and also, Harmony Dissonance is really funny with how many sprites and stuff they just pull straight out of Symphony of the Night, which is really great. Um, But Aria of Sorrow is obviously kind of like the standout game here, like I said a little earlier. Not the only one you should play, but obviously kind of the most refined out of them. Very much like Symphony of the Night, you're equipping weapons as well. You're not using uh, just a a whip. but you're also equipping all the souls that you're you're pulling out of enemies and kind of mixing and matching them. Um, boy, this game is real good. Aria of Sorrow is real, like... <clears throat> I, I feel like Circle of the Moon controls really well, plays really well. Harmony of Dissonance feels a little bit floaty, but it has that cool dash move, so you're just, like, zipping through room after room, and you're just... That's why I finished the game so fast. You were just, like, speed-running your way through most of that game. Um, Aria of Sorrow feels really solid. It feels probably the most like Symphony of Night, and then kind of all the DS and 3DS games that came after it. Like, they all kind of feel in the same vein as this one. Um, I've, uh, I've been enjoying this one a lot, too, so far. I don't remember how far I am. I think probably like 25, 30% through. Bought a bunch of bosses. Forgot there's like seven or eight different characters in this game that you're running into and talking to. So like you finish another area, you run into dude who's totally not Alucard. This guy named Jay. Here's a lady from another game. Like here's this dude that just accidentally showed up in the, uh, the, Dracula's castle inside of an eclipse. Now he's opening a weapon shop. Like it, pretty pretty wild amount of characters. Um, but this one is real. It's definitely one of the the more special ones out of uh, the Metrovanias. And um, I'm 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 really glad I picked up this collection. I'm really glad that M2 did such a good job. Not only is the emulation great, but the they've gone through and they've upgraded the sound. Uh, for it so like the music and the sound effects sound really really good they're not kind of constrained by the sound chip on the gba um and it's it's great four games for 20 bucks like four of the some of the 
best Metroidvania games you can buy for 20 bucks. Like, I, I, you can't go wrong. And I'm glad they put this out. Now I will be eternally hopeful for a whatever you would call the 3DS or the DS and 3DS version. Thankfully, uh, Dawn of Sorrow is really easy. You just need to get rid of the drawing, the sigil on the screen after you beat the boss to stop it from coming back to life. You get rid of that, you probably keep the rest of it. and It'll probably be pretty good. Um, but I want more people to play Portrait of Ruin. I want more people to play Order of Ecclesia. Like, these are, like, some of the top-tier Metrovanias that people just didn't play. Especially Order. God. I'm I know you're a big fan of the Oracle. I'm a huge proponent of Portrait. Portrait of Ruin is... Portrait is so good. It's I, ridiculously good. I feel like people didn't play that for some reason. I don't know if people were just, like, over Castlevania games at that point, or we had sort of moved on from the, the DS, 3DS, or whatever, but Portrait of Ruin is really good. Like, a real clever game. And Order of Ecclesia, I'm, I'm a big proponent of it because... There's like a moment in there in the game, like way late in the game, where they kind of turn the whole game on its head in a really clever way. And not only does it get way more interesting, it gets brutally difficult. And it's so good. Oh, oh man. Please, please, Konami, just l turn M2 loose on those net games next. It's like four games, I think, because it's Dawn of Sorrow, oh, <clears throat> whatever the next one is, Portrait and Ecclesia. Um, I played all of them, but I don't, I don't remember what all of them are, but, um, yeah, Castlevania Advanced Collection seems really great. I, I think it's on everything, uh, pretty much. Yeah. It's like 20 bucks and it has Dracula X in there. If you've never played it, give Dracula X a shot. I don't re I don't really like it. <laughs> I don't, I'm not, it's, it's not my jam. It is brutally difficult and it's sort of, I like the, the classic Castlevania games before they became Metroidvanias, but they're not really my jam. I'm like the Symphony of the Night and After kind of fan. Um, so Dracula X is a little bit too much like that branching paths level by level uh, kind of Castlevania game. Uh, did you look up the uh, the names? I tried to find it, but it just gave me a full list of the Castlevania games, so I was just like, nope, not doing it. I'm not going through 45 games. Thanks. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. Uh, but that's all I'm playing this week. Let's take a break. Yep. i to close these blinds a little. Only half close them, so then we can get that dark side, light side, which version of Boston is talking right now. That's right. That should work. Let's see how that did. Yeah, that's better. <laughs> I have slowly transitioned into nighttime over here. My new lamp is doing its job nicely. I have seen. Yeah, your 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 lighting is solid over there. Hi for anyone that's uh, watching this. Um, got word from. I hope you enjoyed the like spikes. Yeah, I've got word from a community member. We're no longer live on YouTube, so I'll have to delete that video and upload this in whatever fashion it it captures. <laughs> so frustrating. We'll just we'll just hey Robo Pig, nice to see you again. Um we'll blow through this next segment sort of as quickly as we can just to be done with internet issues as fast as we can. Ah boy. Let's check for one last time for any interesting news stories here. Well, there's only two of them. <laughs> Intellivision is selling NFT games for a console that isn't even out yet. Boy, it just well, it just gets better. To... Yeah. <laughs> God. Oh god, I hate NFTs so much. Yeah. Wow. <sighs> so good. <laughs> I just did a quick check, check on Twitter and somebody retweeted a tweet from March, which mm -hmm. is what the WTF is quote unquote banning CDs. Oh, oh, oh turn to dust. Blah. Uh huh. Okay, so I looked Officially it up. Old. There are only three Castlevania games for the DS Dawn of Sorrow, Portrait Ruin, or Reclation. There was not four. 
Could have sworn there okay. was, but there's. I knew there was definitely three. I yeah. couldn't remember about the full one. Yeah. Um. Are those the last Castlevania games? Like mainline ones? Because I think those are the last ones that Ego really worked on. Uh, yeah, Corsburn, Dracula X Chronicles, Orb Ecclesia, The Adventure Rebirth. Lords of Shadow doesn't really count. Dude, don't insult Lords of Shadow. No, Lords of Shadow 1, incredible game. Lords of Shadow 2, miraculously terrible. Like, I, I don't, I, I don't know how I, I never how, played the second one because everyone shat so hard on it. It's it's incredible how you take the same engine and the same team from the first one and you so incredibly mess it up. Like, everything about Lords of Shadow 2 was so bad. I, like, I, I got it for free. Um, Games with Gold, I think it was. Yeah. So I, I have so. it on the Xbox that I can just download and play it, but... Eh. So the last one looks like it's Lords of Shadow Mirror of Fate, the Mercury Steam one, which is actually really good. The yeah, Order of Ecclesia is like the last Konami developed uh, Castlevania game. That's wild. Goodness. Lords yeah, of Shadow is so good. Yeah, Dawn of Sorrow is the last game in, like, the chronology. Okay. <sighs> you guys ready to wrap this thing up? Send my internet uh, back to hell? Yo. In, a little, in a little bit, internet. You gotta, you gotta be cool. <clears throat> Alright, starting in three, two, one. Let's talk releases for the week of October 11th, 2021, Back 4 Blood. Comes out PS4, mm -hmm. PS5, Xbox One, Series X, and PC. Um, uh, I, Game Pass day and date. Yeah, and I believe it was early access this past week for, like, Ultimate Edition pre-orders or whatever. I um, think so, yeah. Awesome. Stop releasing games, please. <laughs> please. <laughs> just, just please. Please give me a break. Just like one week, please. Yeah, we have a we have a giant list here of games. So curious to see what um what people think of that. Uh, the only thing I've heard uh, on that coming out is that I haven't verified this, but I saw this before we were recording that allegedly the single player mode of the game you can't earn like achievements or unlockables or any make any progress on that. I hope that's not the case. Uh, oh. if, if that's the case, that's a real bummer. Yeah, uh, that's gonna suck. Yeah, so don't, don't don't do that. Patch that out, please. Uh, Disco Elysium: The Final Cut comes out on Xbox One, Series X, and Switch. Uh, the the PlayStation exclusivity has ended after what was it, like three or six months or something. So uh, go check that out. Uh, Monster Crown is out on PS4, Xbox One, and Switch. Um, if you wanted a, a more traditional um, Poka clone than something like Temtem, uh, Monster Crown is the game for you. It is literally a 2D Pokemon game. Looks great. Um, I think it's been in early access for a while, so, and I think this is it coming out of early access. Uh, Ori the Collection comes out on the Switch. Uh, from what I understand, this is just the physical release of the first two Ori games. Um, both of those are really great. The Ori and the Will of the Wisps runs at least 60 frames set per second on Switch, which is just some sort of dark magic miracle. So yep. it's it's not one of those things where it's like, yeah, it runs at, like we're aiming for 20. Um, so thankfully, thank you. Good job. Good job, team. Uh, Dungeon Encounters comes out for PS4 or Switch and PC. Um, <laughs> this will probably be the only show you hear anyone talking about Dungeon Encounters. Um, I'll be scooping this up. Because if it's an RPG, you know that's a lie. It's no, I, 
Look, <laughs> you need to watch the trailer for Dungeon Encounters and look at why no one will be picking this up or buying it. So it's a really interesting game. The guy who developed the active time battle system for Square for Final Fantasy IV is the director of this. The producer is the director from Final Fantasy Tactics Advance 2 and Final Fantasy XII Zodiac Job. So, like, you got some people working on this at, at the helm that are... They've made some really cool stuff. I don't know. The first thing that I see for a picture is that there's a level 60 Sir Cat in your party. Yeah. It just <laughs> looks like they had no budget to put it know. nicely what the hell <laughs> is this game yeah uh, I, minimalistic rpg i think if you're what i am interested in checking it out uh is it looks like it is to an extreme degree purely mechanics focused <laughs> like yeah. there is yeah. there is no animation in the battle system it is pictures with bars so like I, I know I have unsold a lot. You weren't, look, you weren't going to buy this game in the first place anyways. Doesn't matter. Uh, the more I see about this game, the more that I think <laughs> when Square puts out these games, remember Square worked with PopCap to put a match three game out on the 360? Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to interrupt, but the trailer yeah. literally says, don't feel, think. Yeah. Don't graphics, think. Um, but like, I feel like when Square takes chances like this and kind of tries to put out something really interesting i usually click with it and me and like the other dozen people that have tried this thing usually click with it and it's for literally nobody else so do you know what the last time i remember them taking this kind of a chance what was hmm. on What's the world that? ends with you yeah world ends like with you is great there was yeah. also that um, dungeon crawling dice game on the 3DS, Shadow, Sh Sh Crimson Shadow, something like that. Like that was a really cool thing. I don't know, but it's also sort of unfortunate because you can look at something like Dungeon Encounters and say like that, without being mean, this looks like a budget thing. And then at the end of the month. Like the voice of cards, the Isle Dragon Roars is coming out, which looks incredible. Like uh -huh. it's just Hand of Fate three that made by Yoko Taro, and it's just like, well, Dungeon Encounters is uh, not looking so hot in comparison, which is kind of a bummer. Dude, I don't know. I'm watching a video on this, and yeah, it's super simplistic, yeah. but it also looks like it'd be something to just listen to something while you run around on mm -hmm. your checkered game board and just blow yep. things up <laughs> it has a hundred levels a hundred levels like that um so i don't know i hope it comes in at the right price uh i hope it comes at like 10 or 15 bucks anything other than that is might be asking a little too much but yeah, uh, you know what though so yeah 35 yeah. bucks here we go <laughs> mm -hmm. you know what this game has got me really wanting now all of a sudden hmm. a pit cross jrpg you monster. Why would you bring that into the world to end me? <laughs> Curse. Uh, someone, about it. someone did try that on the Switch. Oh, God, what was that called? Pic Picture Quest? Uh, oh, I don't remember what it was. It it was okay. I, I feel like that's definitely uh, an interesting nut to crack. Uh, Dude, you could, like solve the puzzles to get your teammates to uncover the bosses and the fights that you have to do. Uh-huh. You finished fights to get pieces of the, the big puzzle at the puzzle. end? Yeah. Uh-huh. A big 25 by 25? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. oh, These are free ideas. That's, like, that, that's, that's either the boss or the you know a new party member or an uh -huh. ability that you unlock. Mm-hmm. Yep. You're, I, I'm, I am here for consultancy, Square Enix. I'm cheap. I, I do have yeah, one yeah. more thing before we move on. Yeah. In in the video, it says the unique stripped down active battle system does not feature attributes, MP, or items. Yeah. It, it's that is very, a very point for this game. <laughs> it's very minimal. I'm 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 desperately curious to see what this what this is going to be. I, yeah, I'm I'm like it could be cool though. 
Yeah, listen in next week because it it comes out this week, and I'm I'm definitely I'm going to spend some amount of time with it. It, it I I think it looks super cool. Uh, next team here, the Rift Breaker comes out on PS5, Series X and S, and PC. Uh, this is not a previous gen game. Uh, it's a kind of a surprisingly cool looking top down tower defense game. Comes out Game Pass day and date. Um, for those of us on the show, I put a trailer there. Um, it uh looks kind of neat i i don't i don't know the last time i've played a tower defense game i don't think i played that defense grid was those those that popular defense uh tower defense game last gen yes two gens ago and also they have one on this gen okay cool yeah so this looks this to me as an outsider looks uh like a, a pretty similar thing so looks cool it's on game pass uh, Jackbox Party Pack 8 comes out PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Series X, Switch, and PC. Um, I, y you know what that is. It's the eighth one after the 20 previous ones. It will probably still also be very good. Um, I'm looking forward to Twitter being enjoyable for once after that game comes out. Uh, so two thumbs up. It's going to be either real enjoyable or real racist so quick. That's true. That's right. Well, it'll be it'll be a good uh, it'll be a good uh, chance to block more people. I'm always true. Always happy to do that. Um, Crisis Remaster Trilogy, PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Series X, Switch, and PC. Um, if you haven't played all three Crisis games, they're fine. Crisis Three was pretty okay. Never yeah. finished that. Yeah, they're well. they're solid. Two was sick as hell on the consoles. Yeah, two was great. The first one is fine. Uh, it's not my favorite, but they're fine. Uh, and NHL 22 comes out PS4, PS5, Xbox One, and Series X. Uh, let's move on to news stories. Uh, two sort of gigantic news stories here this week for uh, probably opposite reasons. Uh, first one, Twitch got hacked. Um Normally, this wouldn't be that notable because I feel like every website sucks and they have too much of our data and now we're just getting into outcast stuff. Anyways, um, <laughs> <laughs> the the big thing is they're they're blaming Twitch is uh, blaming this on, quote, an, uh, an error in a Twitch server configuration change that was subsequently accessed by a malicious third party, end quote. Um. The thing that I find notable uh, about this as, like, a dude who did this in a past life in his career is normally when parts of infrastructure are exposed or they are breached or they are hacked, usually you get, like, a tiny sliver or, like, you just get credit card numbers or you just get server configs or Email you just get, so yeah, like you just get yeah. access to employee inboxes. This got everything. Like, this got internal tools, this got uh, streamer payouts, which is probably the thing that everybody has seen, which we're not going to be talking about in the show because it's a little gauche. Um, but you even got, like, alongside the internal tools, they got access to their entire Git repository, back to the very first code check-in. Like, this is a monumentally huge, just, like, open a garage door and just start taking stuff out of our house sort of hack. Like, this is... Incredible. No, no, dude. It, this is they literally moved into the house and then changed the deed into their name. <laughs> and then they like lifted the house up and moved it to another town. Like it's just like mm -hmm. they just they took everything. Like it monumentally like it a, a drastic uh hack. Uh Twitch has reset everybody's stream keys, which is great. Please go reset your password. Please turn on two factor authentication or multi factor authentication if you don't have it on. Uh, uh, if you do also I've uh, had rumors that they may also have that so refresh it and uh, yeah, you pick a it, different method too it wouldn't hurt yeah, to, I... to do any of that Twitch has said that they haven't gained, gained access to that but you know yeah, I, I haven't been able to find anything about the seeds being accessed yeah. but I mean <laughs> also if you're, if you're interested in uh, Twitch's lack of password security uh, go look at some of the code snippets of when they decrypt your salt hashed password and why it's bad. Uh, there is some really interesting stuff around 
around that. Um, but yeah, set up two-factor authentication. Uh, at the same time, go set it up for any website that offers it and you don't have it yet. Please, for the love of all things holy, um, this stuff is only going to get way worse. Um, and Twitch says they don't store any credit card information, so that was not at risk of, of getting leaked. So if they're telling the truth, who knows? I don't. Well, we probably do know because they, everything got stolen. But, you know, someone yeah. will. And also, this is just part one of the hack. So part two will be coming uh, at some point. So Yeah, this is just what they're aware of. Right. And this is just what's what has been released. Uh, allegedly, there's there's still more to come after this 125 gig torrent that got released. Um, so keep keep your eyes out for part two. Um, keep on keeping on. That's right. That's right. You got it. Um, and uh, our last news story this week: Super Smash Brothers is finished. Uh, Sakurai can finally lay down his arms. He can go take a nap. Namco Bandai can move on to other projects. Every, everybody has finished. Sora has joined the the game as the final fighter, which is actually is actually pretty cool. That's that's a good choice. Yeah. He look, he looks cool in there. That was a cool trailer. Um, but uh, I, I follow a Twitter account called Scrub Quotes, which is hilarious. Yes. So if you don't follow them, you might want to follow them. And they immediately posted the oh, why is it another sword character? <laughs> <laughs> that's real good. That's real. <laughs> oh, that's real good. Uh, they also announced that Kingdom Hearts games will be the kind of the big three Kingdom Hearts games, like one, one, two, and three. Yeah, like one point whatever, <laughs> two point whatever, three point. The big three that contain all twenty eight point three uh, Kingdom Hearts games that are out. They're going to be releasing on Switch, cloud streaming only, which. Whatever that must have been super easy for Square to do to, to just kind of push those out on the Switch without having to actually well, do a full cloud port. streaming. Yes, anything right. else? No, that's why it's cloud streaming. Well, and I, I it, this feels very much like one of those decisions where it's like the the numbers aligned on this Excel spreadsheet to say, all right, if we spend X amount of engineers, Y amount of time. We'll probably make a pretty good amount of money, but if we try and squeeze these things onto the switch to run pretty poorly, ooh, that's you know a lot of people are like, oh, you're cloud streaming a PS2 game. I don't. You clearly didn't run, try the remasters that did not run super well, anyways. Game Wars Three ran great, but the other ones are are sort of struggling uh, at this point. So. Yeah. Uh, that's why I'm happy to see Square putting more stuff out on Unreal Engine, because it's like, yeah, it runs great, it looks great, everything's great. Um, but yeah, PS2 era Square was still making their own uh, making their own engines. Um, so, yep. happy for Smash Brothers to to kind of have a bow put on it. Uh, we've, we've ended another Smash Brothers era, um, and it seems like seems like all of it was, was well received. Um, I know a lot of people were grumpy like moon said earlier about oh another sword fight oh, here's another fire emblem character Mer. um but overall it seems like it was it was a cool roster and a, a cool game that i have did you somehow not played so because a new character has been announced have you seen kirby sora yes Whoa. it's very good it's yeah you should kirby, look it kirby, up, kirby with like the mop of anime hair it's, it's yeah. very good yeah yeah. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me check. Let me check. Yeah, um, <laughs> <laughs> it's perfect. Okay, that is pretty great. Um, also, I will say one of the meme release thing I did spot to this was um, Sora jumping into the Smash Brothers universe, being welcomed by Cloud, and it's like, "Hey, Cloud, it's good to see you again." It's like, "Also, well, I'm sorry, but you'll never guess who else is here." And then it's just the outline of um, Sephiroth saying, learn to block punk. <laughs> because <laughs> Great. if you haven't played Sephiroth in Kingdom Hearts 1, you don't know pain. Yep. Oh, man. Yeah, 1 and 2, both of those fights were brutal. Jeez. Uh, all right. On that note, uh, let's wrap up this episode before my internet decides to, to poop itself again. Uh, you can visit us at tvgp.tv. Everywhere to find a follow... 
That's right. That's right. <laughs> Hold on. Um, uh, everyone will find and follow us on the right-hand side of the page, including the link to the Discord server. Um, come hang out with us. Uh, the, uh, the, the Game Awards has finally had the... Um, its airing date announced so that will be the kind of the final hurrah for the not e3 2021 channel until january 1st rolls around and i'll start the not e3 2022 channel um and we'll <laughs> we'll suffer together again um but uh, like we always say we have the best community on the internet um and uh it, it's a small but uh, dedicated and very friendly uh community over on the discord over there so come come hang out with us patreon.com slash E1M1. The ones and numbers. Uh, you can get all the stuff we talked about at the beginning of the show. Um, the benefits for us is that you help us uh, pay for the hosting and the software and all the stuff that goes into uh, making and producing and editing and making the show sound good. Uh, uh, your hard-earned cash goes towards that. We sincerely appreciate it. Uh, if you cannot support us financially, which we totally understand, uh, Anywhere you can rate us five stars helps out a ton. Share on social media, tell your friends. All that stuff helps out way more than anybody thinks. Like that's the stuff that I could spend my money buying ads, ad time, or ad space, or whatever. That helps a little bit, but the 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 long time listeners are the ones that uh, are find it through their friends. Um, so that stuff helps out a ton. And we uh, we sincerely appreciate it. We sincerely appreciate you listening. We'll see you all next week. Bye. 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 Oh, man. So I just looked it up because Steam posted it. Dungeon Encounters, $29.99. Oof. But Oof. if you get it now, you get 20% off. So it's $23.99 on Steam. Oh, that's so bad. Yeah. Oh, oh, maybe I won't buy Dungeon also, that, Encounters. That feels like a Switch game. Come on. L look, I will be nice. <laughs> it looks like a $10 game. I was more yeah. than happy, like 10 15 bucks. I will hop yep. in. I will give this thing a chance. I will do an experiment. $30? I will put that towards, like, Voice of Cards. I will put that towards... $30 oh, puts masters. this on a list for me to look out for it come the holiday season. Yeah, it goes on my it goes PS on prices wish list. Like, and yeah. when PS prices says it's 50% off, right. Like, legitimately, Alan Wake remastered is $30. Yeah. P play that instead. Like, God, that's square. It's so stupid. Uh, How also, much are, the, um, are those uh, Final Fantasy games on mobile phone again? The uh oh the pixel remasters? Just like all square games on mobile. Come on. <sighs> Too much. Um thankfully the pixel remasters have been a lot less money. They've been like 11, 12, 15 bucks. Though that's way more. Uh, also put out Final Fantasy V Pixel Remaster, please. I'm begging you. I only played Final Fantasy V six times this year. I need to play it another time, clearly. Anyways, Nimp, what are your titles? <laughs> I have. Where are your breakers? I'm messing with Dim. And you run into death. Minor spoilers. Uh, Moon, what do you have? Uh, keep on keeping on. Now we're here. Christmas tree bulbs. I love you, Justin. Outfit of kitchen utensils. Or night of the kitchen. Um, bit through the cheeseburger. Sorry, bit through the cheese grater. Um, Bluta, RGB of superheroes, don't feel, think, and a little bit gauche. I have HDR studs, seven Harrys per year, yeah. the night of the kitchen, I'm messing with Dim, and keep on keeping on. I like the night of the kitchen a lot. Yeah. I'm cool with that. That's that's probably my front runner. I don't know if you guys have anything else that you nope. you're feeling uh, good about. No, the, we we can go with that one. Okay. I like it. I'll circle it. Let me know when you're ready. I'm ready. Uh... Okay, let's go. All right, starting in three, two, one. 
This is the Avenue Game Podcast, episode 729 for October 11th, 2021, the night of the kitchen. I really need a sharpener. Tis only a flesh wound. All right. Of course. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for listening, the for watching. First thing that came to mind. You. Watching as much as you could. God, this just some days the internet is bad. Some days it's it, it. One of us rolls the dice, and I rolled a I rolled a one. Like playing Hand of Fate two, I rolled three uh -huh. dice, and I came up with a three. Feels good. Yep. <laughs> All right. Thanks everyone for hanging out with us. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.